Srimad Bhagavatam Translated with commentaries by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada Canto 1, Chapter 11 Lord Krishna's Entrance in Dwarka Text 1 Sutta Goswami said, The Lord, upon reaching the border of his most prosperous metropolis, known as the country of the Anartas, Dwarka, sounded his auspicious conch shell, heralding his arrival and apparently pacifying the dejection of the inhabitants. Purport the beloved Lord was away from his own prosperous metropolis of Dwarka for a considerably long period because of the battle of Kurikshetra, and thus all the inhabitants were overcome with melancholy due to the separation. When the Lord descends on the earth, his eternal associates also come with him, just as the entourage of the king accompanies him. Such associates of the Lord are eternally liberated souls, and they cannot bear the separation of the Lord even for a moment because of intense affection for the Lord. Thus the inhabitants of the city of Dwarka were in a mood of dejection and expected the arrival of the Lord at any moment. So the heralding sound of the auspicious cockshell was very encouraging and apparently the sound pacified their dejection. They were still more aspirant to see the Lord amongst themselves, and all of them became alert to receive him in the befitting manner. These are the signs of spontaneous love of Godhead. Text 2 The white and fat-bowled conchal, being gripped by the hands of Lord Krishna and sounded by him, appeared to be reddened by the touch of his transcendental lips. It seemed that a white swan was playing in the stems of red lotus flowers. Purport Redness of the white conch shell due to the lip touch of the Lord is a symbol of spiritual significance. The Lord is all spirit, and matter is ignorance of the spiritual existence. Factually, there is nothing like matter in the spiritual enlightenment, and the spiritual enlightenment takes place at once by the contact of the Supreme Lord, Sri Krishna. The Lord is present in every particle of all existence, and he can manifest his presence in anyone. By ardent love and devotional service of the Lord, or, in other words, by spiritual contact with the Lord, everything becomes spiritually reddened, like the conch shell in the grip of the Lord. And the Paramahamsa, or the supremely intelligent person, plays the part of the ducking swan in the water of spiritual bliss, eternally decorated by the lotus flower of the Lord's feet. Text 3 The citizens of Dwarka, having heard that sound which threatens fear personified in the material world, began to run towards him fast, just to have a long-desired audience with the Lord, who is the protector of all devotees. Purport As already informed, the citizens of Dwarka, who lived at the time of Lord Krishna's presence, were all liberated souls, who descended there, along with the Lord, as entourage. All were very anxious to have an audience with the Lord, although they were never separated from the Lord by spiritual contact. Just as the gopis at Vrindavan used to think of Krishna while he was away from the village for cowherding engagements, so also the citizens of Dwarka were all immersed in thought of the Lord while he was away from Dwarka to attend to the battle of Kurikshetra. Some distinguished fiction writer in Bengal concluded that the Krishna of Vrindavan, that of Mathura, and that of Dwarka were different personalities. 
Historically, there is no truth in this conclusion. The Krishna of Kurikshetra and the Krishna of Dwarka are one and the same personality. The citizens of Dwarka were thus in a state of melancholy due to the Lord's absence from the transcendental city, as much as we are put in a state of melancholy at night because of the absence of the sun. The sound heralded by Lord Krishna was something like the heralding of the sunrise in the morning. So, all the citizens of Dwarka awoke from a state of slumber because of the sunrise of Krishna, and they all hastened toward him just to have an audience. The devotees of the Lord know no one else as protector. The sound of the Lord is identical with the Lord, as we have tried to explain by the non-dual position of the Lord. The material existence of our present status is full of fear. Out of the four problems of material existence, namely the food problem, the shelter problem, the fear problem, and the mating problem, the fear problem gives us more trouble than the others. We are always fearful due to our ignorance of the next problem. The whole material existence is full of problems, and thus the fear problem is always prominent. This is due to our association with the illusory energy of the Lord, known as maya, or external energy. Yet, all fear is vanquished as soon as there is the sound of the Lord represented by his holy name, as it was sounded by Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in the following 16 words. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. We can take advantage of these sounds and be free from all threatening problems of material existence. Text 4 and 5 The citizens arrived before the Lord with their respective presentations, offering them to the fully satisfied and self-sufficient one, who, by his own potency, incessantly supplies others. These presentations were like the offering of a lamp to the sun. Yet the citizens began to speak in ecstatic language about receiving the Lord, just as wards welcome their guardian and father. Purport The Supreme Lord Krishna is described herein as Atmarama. He is self-sufficient, and there is no need for him to seek happiness from anything beyond himself. He is self-sufficient because his very transcendental existence is total bliss. He is eternally existent. He is all cognizant and all blissful. Therefore, any presentation, however valuable it may be, is not needed by him. But still, because he is the well-wisher for one and all, he accepts from everyone everything that is offered to him in pure devotional service. It is not that he is in want for such things, because the things are themselves generated from his energy. The comparison is made herein that it is something like offering a lamp in the worship of the sun god. Anything fiery and illuminating is but an emanation of the energy of the sun, and yet to worship the sun god it is necessary to offer him a lamp. In the worship of the sun, there is some sort of demand made by the worshiper. But in the case of devotional service of the Lord, there is no question of demand from either side. It is all a sign of pure love and affection between the Lord and the devotee. The Lord is the supreme father of all living beings, and therefore, those who are conscious of this vital relation with God 
can make filial demands from the father, and the father is pleased to supply the demands of such obedient sons without bargaining. The Lord is just like the desire tree, and from him everyone can have everything by the causeless mercy of the Lord. As the Supreme Father, the Lord, however, does not supply to a pure devotee what is considered to be a barrier to the discharge of devotional service. Those who are engaged in the devotional service of the Lord can rise to the position of unalloyed devotional service by his transcendental attraction. Text 6 The citizen said, O Lord, you are worshipped by all demigods like Brahma, the four sanas, and even the king of heaven. You are the ultimate rest for those who are really aspiring to achieve the highest benefit of life. You are the supreme, transcendental Lord. An inevitable time cannot exert its influence upon you. Purport The Supreme Lord is Sri Krishna, as confirmed in Bhagavad Gita, Brahma Sanhita, and other authorized Vedic literatures. No one is equal to or greater than him, and that is the verdict of all scriptures. The influence of time and space is exerted upon the dependent living entities who are all parts and parcels of the Supreme Lord. The living entities are predominated, Brahman, whereas the Supreme Lord is the predominating absolute. As soon as we forget this clear fact, we are at once in illusion and thus we are put into threefold miseries, as one is put into dense darkness. The clear consciousness of the cognizant living being is God-consciousness, in which one bows down unto him in all circumstances. Text 7 O creator of the universe, you are our mother, well-wisher, Lord, Father, spiritual master, and worshipful deity. By following in your footsteps, we have become successful in every respect. We pray, therefore, that you continue to bless us with your mercy. Purport The all-good personality of Godhead, being the creator of the universe, also plans for the good of all good living beings. The good living beings are advised by the Lord to follow his good advice, and by doing so, they become successful in all spheres of life. There is no need to worship any deity but the Lord. The Lord is all-powerful, and if he is satisfied by our obedience unto his lotus feet, he is competent to bestow upon us all kinds of blessings for the successful execution of both our material and spiritual lives. For attaining spiritual existence, the human form is a chance for all to understand our eternal relation with God. Our relation with Him is eternal. It can never be broken or vanquished. It may be forgotten for the time being, but it can be revived also by the grace of the Lord if we follow his injunctions, which are revealed in the scriptures of all times and all places. <laughs>